So this is my next little landscape. You can see here that I've got lovely salty marks there that could look a little bit like pebbles. So I'm going to do some negative painting. Negative painting is when you actually paint around something to make it stand out. So I've got some um, quinacridone gold deep and I've also got some stallow turquoise and I'm just going to mix the two together and it's going to give me a lovely green colour. A little bit more gold in there. Okay. Nice and transparent still. And just painting around some of those shapes. So I will speed it up here a little bit for you. So while that's still wet, I'm going to pick up a little bit of indigo quite transparently and just drop it into the more distant areas. And then I'm just going to soften back these harsh edges just with a little bit of water. I don't want to focus too much on detail. I want to leave a lot to the imagination. So let's start to put in, uh, we could make some trees here. So I could put a wash of this green over the trees and, um, and do some scratching in to make some tree trunks so let's do that i've just picked up my number 10 round and i'm going to pick up some more of that green and just put a glaze in this area here just very gently i don't want to reactivate what's underneath A little bit more over here, make it more interesting. 
picking up a little bit of indigo and just dropping in down the bottom of the trees. using a clean brush now a little bit of water on it just to soften up some of those edges okay while that's still wet I'm just going to use a toothpick or something you could use something sharp and just start to add some trunks to these trees Give you a closer look there and see the scratch marks. Okay, I'm just going to use my fibre tipped pen. Now you could use a gel pen for this. And I'm going to put in a fence line. little bit of salt on there and just take that off And I really don't think this painting needs much more doing to it. I could possibly just put a couple of birds just in the in the sky. And I would call that finished. On to the next little landscape. First of all, just a little close up for you. Here's another little artwork that I need to create a landscape on as part of this series so it's got a really odd piece here but I really feel this looks like a hilltop so I'm just going to leave this part here as it is I think I will possibly make this area into some trees and maybe get a building something like that in here so let's just see how it plays out First of all, I'm going to use some of my quinacridone gold, sticking with the colours that I used pre in the previously in the painting. And using the indigo again and making that a little bit darker. Now the edge of it is really quite solid so what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of water on my little detail brush and I'm just going to try and soften off the edge a little bit by scrubbing in and just reactivating 
the previous layer of paint so that I haven't got a really harsh line in there. Okay, that looks a lot better. We'll see what it looks like once it's dry. So in the meantime, I can just bring some of that green down into the mountain as well. I'll just go back to my bigger brush. So just with that quinacridone gold, just warming up the area a little bit and making the foreground much stronger too. So just some Queen Aquadone gold in there. A little bit of salt still there. Take that out. Okay, I'm much happier with that. Maybe even just a little bit more of that gold just down the bottom here. Give me a sense of distance. So remember, warmer colours in the foreground, cooler colours in the distance, which is what we've got. Just going to dry that off and I will come back to you and finish it off. So looking at this now and just going with the flow, I'm really feeling that this looks like a stand of trees here. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that quinacridone gold. And bring some just down into this area here. And again, a little bit of the Sodalite Genuine, sorry, um, the Indigo. And just letting them work together. Softening off a little bit. Then I'm going to pick up some of the indigo again on the script liner. So just get grabbing my script liner. And I'm just going to start to just pull down some tree trunks. Not worrying about any bleeding that may occur. Just trying to keep this painting very loose. Okay, I'm just going to now darken up. Just in here.
this with the Sodalite Genuine. Adding some more colour, you'll notice that I'm using the flat of the script liner rather than the point to put in some of this interesting foreground. I feel as though the treetop up here is a little bit um, bland, so I'm just going to pick up some more of the Sodalite Genuine with some water and just putting another layer of a glaze on there. Just add some of those, some of that lovely colour into the other trees. Okay, I'm going to dry that off again. Just going to use a gel pen to help define some of these tree trunks. I will leave some some in the distance and some darker like this so the distant ones will be more faded and just some stronger blacks will bring some of these tree trunks more forward I've uh, just finished off the pen work here and it really does need a focal point so I'm going to use some gouache if you haven't got gouache you could use white acrylic and just using a small brush I'm going to add some sheep to to this painting. Gouache is wonderful because it is very opaque. Now you can tint gouache with watercolour. It's also a good tool if you're uh, if you make a mistake you can always cover up a mistake with a little bit of gouache so we'll go with three A little bit of water on the brush here. The gouache is quite thick. Sometimes you just need to add just a little touch of water to help it move. Okay, that gouache is still wet. I'm just going to wash my brush and I'm just picking up a little bit of indigo, just a, a tiny amount and I'm just going to start to shade the bottom of the sheep 
and just underneath where the head will go. Soften up any of those lines by just blending a little bit with your brush. Now the sheep will need a little bit of shadow underneath them to anchor them to the ground. So I'll put that in now. Just softening off those shadows a little bit. And then I'm going to use my pen. I just want to dry the gouache off first though, so I'll quickly do that. I'll dry. I'm just going to use my gel pen now. And just adding the sheep's faces and their ears. couple of legs happening Little black tails. Now sheep do have a little um, top knot on them. I'm just going to add a bit more shading down there. Just with my pen. And I'm just going to use a little bit of gouache now. Just finding my little brush. Just taking the excess water off. Picking up a little bit of the gouache. And just giving them that little top knot that they have on their heads. And I think that this painting is possibly done. So it's just a matter of signing it. And there you go, sheep in the meadow. So as promised, here's a close-up of the six paintings, all created from one sheet of A3 Canson cold press watercolour paper. Just recapping, I taped the paper down, added various colours to it, let it run, let them mix and mingle, threw some salt on, did some splattering, and then I let it dry. So then I cut it up into six squares and that resulted in me doing six different paintings all along the same theme connected by colour and technique and also subject matter. So I'm just going to give you a close up of each one.
I'm not sure which is my favourite. I think I've got a couple of favourites. Really love this one. And I love the fresh colours in this one too. I love painting sheep. Hard to choose. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos and that you will have a play around making your own backgrounds and dividing them up and creating a series of paintings. Thanks for watching. I'm trying to build my channel. I would love you to subscribe and keep watching. Thank you.